Welcome to A View from the Summit, where we explore the unique relationship between humans and animals, whether it's an Olympic partner or couch buddy, a working companion or unique pet, a world champion, or someone you think the world of. Join us for a look at animals in our lives. Brought to you by Summit Animal Health. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of View from the Summit. And man, have we got a story that's, uh, well, let's just say it's a different stripes kind of, if uh, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, and we're also humping to get through life. Never, you'll understand in a minute. Uh, again, my name is Steve Searcy. I'm the co-host and I get the supreme pleasure of introducing my co-host, Robin Benson, who's way, way up north, just this far from the Canadian border. No, literally this far. It's not just <laughs> on a map. It's literally this far. And I have been traveling and I'm down here in Florida and I would tell you that it's miserable, but my mama told me not to lie. Welcome, Robin. Thank you, Steve, and thanks for rubbing that in. It looks pretty sunny and nice where you are. Yeah, we're here in northwestern Minnesota. It's um, not super cold, but plenty dark. We're in the dark phase of our, some days we get a little sun, but the days are super short, and today's really cloudy, so I'm not sure if it's gotten light yet or not, but that's okay, because we bring our own sunshine, and I am so grateful to do this with you and Sammy Joe's going we're just so excited to hear from you. This is I've been really looking forward to this and um one of the things we love to do we share the unique experiences and connections with animals and their humans. I like to put it that way because that's the order of importance, right? And um we never know how it's going to unfold, but we do know that it's going to be fun. We're going to laugh sometimes cry in a good way. And so let's jump in. I can't wait to hear more. So, so this is Sammy Joe, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And when I tell you she's unique, but in the, in the next 20 minutes, you're going to understand how unique Sammy Joe really is. Sammy Joe, what's the name of your ranch? I want to get that um, right. SJ Farm. SJ Farms. So you're going to want to go to SJ Farms and, and look them up. But Sammy Joe, has trained like 25 zebras to be ridden. And one of them was a show jumper. <laughs> Sammy Joe, what the heck are you smoking down there in Texas? <laughs> uh, you know, um, I've always been kind of an odd duck and I always was growing up and everything. And I'm, I'm kind of the, the kind of person where somebody says that something's not possible or you can't do something. I look at it and say, well, why not? And so um, I was training horses and I was doing demonstrations and things at expos and all kinds of stuff. And, um, and at some point, somebody said something about zebras being impossible to train. And I said, oh, I bet I could do that. And I was like, you know, I had to look into it. You know, is it even possible to own one? And so um, I bought my first zebra when I was 16 and, um, and I was completely hooked. And so I just started working with them and and you know they are very very difficult but I love them you know they're they're just such a unique experience um and so then I've you know trained you know more than 20 of them over the years uh, for riding and driving and all kinds of fun stuff did, did the the first or the one that was the jumper mm -hmm. did he or she like to jump I mean, oh, yes. w yeah. it, it was an easy transition, yeah, I mean, yeah. just char character-wise, animal-wise. Yeah. And, you know, the, the thing is with, with most of the zebras, you know, some of them, they didn't want to do stuff. And, and I was kind of, there was plenty of options for me. So if a zebra really didn't want to ride or didn't want to do something, you know, I just let them do whatever worked for them. So Knitting, knitting or <laughs> knitting, whatever, yeah. you know. So um, with Zach, that's the one you're talking about that jumps. Um, he was just one of those he wanted to be with people, you know, he wanted to hang out with people and he was the friendliest, sweetest zebra. And literally I could have anybody, even if he'd never ridden a horse before, you could come out and get on him and go for a ride. Like he was just amazing. Really, really fun. So I am a horse person and I've heard the same as you. Zebras, like you can't train them. Right. Right. But I've seen horses like crosses, you know, mm -hmm. but 
so I got to know, tell me a couple of the key differences that you notice when you're, tra- cause I've trained horses my whole life. Right. So <clears throat> training a zebra, what's different about them? I mean, they're the same equine right. you know, family, but what are a couple really key differences other than their color and their whatever, um, that you've noticed in training and their personality and, and things you've had to tweak that you figured out. Cause obviously you figured it out. So, so, um, I think with, with the difference is that you have to train a zebra the way you should train a horse. Um, if that makes sense. And, um, with horses, you can get away with a lot of mistakes, right. And, um, and we see people doing it all the time. You know, we see people who, they've never touched a horse in their life and they will get one that's wild as can be. And the next thing you know, like they're getting away with all kinds of stuff with it because horses are, um, you know, they're so forgiving. Um, But there's also the side of horses where horses go into the learned helplessness really easy, right? So, and we see that with a lot, we're, we're thankfully getting away from that a lot with horse training, but that was such a technique for so long in horse training and still is in a lot of parts of the world and in, in a lot of industries where well, you know, our, yeah, I'm our sorry. viewers and our listeners explain that learned helplessness. So work. learned helplessness is kind of like when you put them in a position where they don't have a choice and you just say, this is what it's going to be. This is what it's going to be. And it's techniques called flooding. Um, and that's what we used to call desensitization. And that's largely flooding um, in, in the way it's traditionally been taught. And that's where you just flood them with stimulation until they just shut down completely. And then they're accepting. And what we kind of see as them being trained, is just them giving up. And they've just learned that if they just blank the world out and disassociate, that nothing bad's going to happen. So it works with horses, right? It's not the way we should do it, right? Zebras don't go to that. Zebras do not do learned helplessness. So people try the traditional you know, desensitizing techniques um, with a zebra and it doesn't work. They will kill themselves before they give up um, and go into that helpless state. So with zebras, I think the difference is that you really have to be open to two-way communication. Um, And you can't just say, I'm telling you to do this and this is what you're going to do. You have to really be open to listening to their response and seeing if they're okay with it. And once you get past that point with zebras where they decide that you're okay and that they can trust you, you can do amazing things with them. You know, I I argue you can get further with a zebra than you can with a horse in the same amount of time once you pass that point where they can trust you. But it's understanding what trust is. And I think trust has a different meaning to the general society than than kind of what I see it as. Um, People think you say, what is trust? And they'll say, oh, it means that they know I won't hurt them. That's not true at all, because I won't trust somebody just because I think they won't hurt me, (laughs) right? So I think trust is predictability of responses. So it's not in saying, oh, I'm never going to hurt you. It's saying, look, I am always going to respond this way in this situation. And they get to, to be able to predict that and because we can't ever tell them that we're never gonna hurt them, right? I've got to give my horse vaccinations. Like, I can't say, oh, I'm never gonna hurt you and then poke you with a needle. So, but what I am gonna say is that my, my responses are going to be predictable and that you can trust what that response is going to be. And I think that's the big difference. My, my dad told me that it built character. So, <laughs> yes. Um, I think that there's some parallel there. Right. Character building is very yeah, important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to make you a better human being, Steve. Whack, whack, whack. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Dad. So what what is the, you know, because I have heard that zebras are can be very violent. Very. Uh, uh, and, and attack and all that and can do real damage. Definitely. Um, but, but. And that's true because you told me earlier, no one should really own a zebra except a professional. Is that right? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And people get them. And, um, and I think what they miss, they, they're so worried about it being tame and they're so worried about being able to touch it and being able to be in the same space with it, that they neglect the other side, which is the boundary side. And they will not trust you if you do not have boundaries. And 
you know, again, that's the predictability of responses. You know, you need to be predictable in what you say. If you are a little bit unstable and if you're not sure with your boundaries, they are going to not trust that you can take care of the situation. So in a zebra's world, if there is a member of their herd that they can't trust to protect the herd, they'll kill it. <laughs> so wow. they're not just going to ostracize it. They will kill that member of the herd that is not the predictable stable member of the herd so people get them as babies and then they just allow them to get up in their space and they don't hold any boundaries and then as that baby grows up um it doesn't see you as a stable member member of the herd that can do its part to protect the herd so they very very often when they hit three four years old um people will get attacked by their zebras because you know the zebras are like this is not okay i don't understand why you're doing this you're going to die. <laughs> so, wow. so what's the funniest thing? What's the funniest interaction? You know, because we're all about animal human communication. <laughs> what's the funniest interaction that you've had with one of your zebras? All right. So, so what's the rating on the show? <laughs> well, we're, uh, we're, we're I, pretty good. I, at I, hey, as an I don't, I don't know, but I'm already hooked. It's, You're going to have to tell the story. Okay, so I've done a lot of like on set stuff. We've done a lot of like TV shows and and commercials and things like that. And so um, being on set with animals is always you just you don't know what's going to happen. Like you can you bring set the things shovel up. in the bucket. <laughs> yeah, you can try to have everything just so, and something's going to go wrong. And um, so I did this show, and it was a family um, kind of local TV station. And, you know, the setting was inside, like in a library setting, and it was just kind of this morning talk show thing. And so I brought my zebra and um, also had a lemur on set um, that a friend of mine um, had. And so it was all going good. We're all set up. We're inside, like there's carpet floor, and it's just this beautiful setting. And I look over and my zebra starts peeing. <laughs> Charlie started peeing in the middle of set like we have oh, no. literally five minutes till we're starting to shoot like this is a live show and it's counting down on the little ticker and he starts peeing and he pees like it's a massive amount of pee and so they've got I had to like move him real quick and they're trying to squeegee it all up as soon as possible and it's just awful so okay so we're like okay we're down we got like one minute to shoot we get set up in our positions and you know the lemur sitting on a little stool i'm standing there with with charlie and we've got like 10 seconds left and you know he's standing very still he's being very good you know he's very good on set and i noticed that he's got kind of a look of concentration on his face <laughs> and it's like uh oh so i kind of step back and uh, I don't know if there's a great way to put this, but uh, he was exercising. I think horse people might understand what that term means. And oh my was, goodness. He was still a stallion at that point. He was like six years old and uh, there was a lot <laughs> showing. And so this is a family show. And he, I mean, now they, they get down like 10 seconds and then they're counting down and then we, you know, action. We're shooting in my zebra and I'm trying to like shift him around just a little bit to try and get him a little yeah, bit yeah. as you do with horses to like put it away. <laughs> oh no, no, he went the full show right there <laughs> on set in front of everybody. It was, I was about to die. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. The guys operating that, the cameras were shaking because they were laughing so hard, <laughs> trying to keep this live show family safe. <laughs> um, as he was over there having fun. So funny. Oh my gosh. Maybe he really liked the lemur. <laughs> yeah, no, well, he lived with the lemur. It's funny because then, so the, the host, she's like, okay, she's going to go stand next to the lemur because, you know, she, yeah. they're trying to keep him, most of his body out of shot. And then the lemur, lemur just turns around and pees right all over the front of her shirt. And, <laughs> and you know, this is like two sweet older ladies and it's just like this really family friendly show. And then, you know, the lemur pees on her and my zebra's over there. <laughs> they, they will never invite 
animals Never. back to that show. Never did. Banned. <laughs> animals are banned. We're like we are never having anything on set again that can pee or poop or. That, 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 funny. that well now I I know that this is not the only eccentricity that you have. Oh, I have you, plenty. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and most of them have four legs, right? Yes. So tell me about your big guy, your water buffalo. So Wilson, um, he's got quite a fan club. So I've had him, he is coming 16, and I've had him since he was a week old. Um, and it's kind of one of those, you know, some people impulse buy a candy bar. And I saw this baby water buffalo. Um, I was actually transporting some camels for um, a friend of mine and stopped at this place for an overnight stay and they had this um, little bitty baby water buffalo there and just I had I had room in the trailer what are you gonna do <laughs> so I brought him home and he has been the most amazing like I don't regret a day of that there are some days where I might say bad words to him because he he breaks things a lot He's very <laughs> destructive, but I love that boy so much. I mean, it's been 16 years of, you know, being my buddy, um, that he's just wonderful. I love him. Yeah. Well, you told me that he has a pasture and if he sees yep. you go ahead, share that story that he just come goes. Yeah. Berserk. Like he, he knows where I am all the time and he talks to me all the time. And, and if he sees me come outside, like whatever I'm doing chores or whatever, he's going to be watching whatever I'm doing. And he's, he's always paying attention to where I am. He wants to be with me all the time. And he's huge. You know, I say he's like a 2000 pound Labrador with horns, you know, he's, he's giant. And um, we, we do this big nativity thing every year we just got finished a few days ago with it um and we've been doing that every year since he was a baby and uh we used to like hitch up and pull a wagon around um the last couple of years uh didn't have him doing that because it just got too crowded but there's like 200 people in costume and it's dark and there's fire pots everywhere and like it's it's a big event um but he loves it and every year so the first night um, I get his halter out and I walk out of the house with his halter um, and it, it jingles and he is probably 200 yards away and like his head comes up and he's like is that my halter <laughs> and he just comes running I have video and he's like I'm coming mom and he oh, just loves it like he wants to go all the time he's ready to go that's so cool so Obviously, lemurs, camels, water buffalo, zebras. I mean, horses sound boring at this point, right? <laughs> Pretty mundane. But you obviously have a um, unique skill to communicate. It's a probably maybe not a skill is the right word because that maybe can be developed. But but just an innate ability or you're in tune or when did you realize that this was something you said when you were 16, you got a zebra, right. but when did you really realize and get in touch with this, this um, energy you have, or I don't know what word you want to put on it that allows you to connect and read and, and, you know, cause you're training them, but really you're just yeah. working with them, communicating with them in a way that allows you to do things that, you know, they maybe wouldn't always do, but you, you have to work with them or they're not going to do it. So when did yes. you realize this, this unique um, communication ability you have? So it's, all it's definitely results? that I've been around um, horses and animals since I was, I mean, mom brought me home from the hospital and put me on a horse. So um, the horses have just been a constant part of my life for all of it. Um, and I was an odd little kid and, uh, you know, it wasn't until, you know, you get older where, you know, there's there's phrases for that and better understanding for that. And it's, you know, life on the spectrum. And it's one of these things where for me, it means, you know, eye contact is really difficult and sometimes talking to people is really difficult. And, um, and I tend to spend a lot of time alone, but one of the things is I, I can notice patterns and, and behaviors really, really easily. And to me, you know, even when I was a little kid, there's some videos of me when I was like, five years old working with the baby mules and you know I'm looking at it now going 
you know, even as a little kid, like I could read them and it was so easy. It was like right there. And I couldn't believe nobody else could see like what they were saying, what they were doing. Um, and it was just so easy for me. And I think it was just, you know, I have a very sensitivity to noticing patterns and noticing behaviors and little bitty details um, of communication. And I think that's so much what it is. Um, I see a lot of a lot of skills. And when it comes to horses, this is kind of an easy one to associate with. You can teach just about anybody in one day to become 50% proficient in any skill, okay? Whether you're talking about welding, horseback riding, pretty much any skill. In one day, a person can become 50% pro uh, proficient in that skill. Every percent after that takes twice as much time as the, the percent before it, right? Mm -hmm. So the way that that can kind of work is to say, you know, one day, 50%, great. So to get that next 3%, it's going to take an extra two days and then it's an extra four days. And then, so when you, when you do that, it looks like you learn a lot to begin with, but then to become 75% proficient, it's 40 years, right? And then to become a hundred percent proficient, it's like 800 years. So when, when you really look at that scale of the way learning works, so that's on an average person. Now, if a person has the feel right? And horse people know what the feel is. And this is this mysterious thing that it's hard to describe. And it's where we can really feel the emotion that a horse is doing um, that is associated with behaviors. You know, a person can look at a behavior and go, oh, he's being naughty. But a person with the feel can really kind of see what's behind it and what's, what's kind of causing it. And that's something that I feel like you can't teach. Like, you know, I've tried to work with people who just don't have it, you know, and they try really hard and they want to so bad. And sometimes those are the people who want to have it and they just never develop that feel. So there's a combination between, you know, teaching the skill, um, but there's, there's the feel that you have to have in order to really get it. Um, and I feel like that's, I didn't have a lot of formal training when I was young, but I had a lot of feel. And I think that's really important. That is absolutely fascinating. Yeah, <laughs> it really sums up, you know, a lot of pieces that animals have provided for you during your life. It's allowed Definitely. outlet to use this feel, this intuition, this sense, which I can completely relate to and totally know what you're talking about, by the way. Um, and also some of your challenges as a kid. Mm -hmm. It's provided um, a vehicle, so to speak, for you to grow into your best self, right? Because Definitely. those challenges you had as a kid are, I'm sure, still there, but oh, definitely. the animals have allowed you to blossom and embrace those things that maybe were considered strange or awkward or whatever, but allowed you to become a person who's flourishing and animals, you know, Talk about some of the things that some of maybe a couple instances where you felt in your heart, like, wow, if I didn't have my zebra or my camel or my water buffalo, how would I deal with this situation? Or I would never have done this and never there's, dreamed of doing this. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's so many times in life, like, you know, I could write books about the challenges sure. of life that animals have have helped through. And, you know, there's there's so much and you look at things like, you know, high school's difficult for anybody. Right. And I was in a little tiny town out in the middle of nowhere. And I mean, I was an odd one. Like, you know, I was always always reading four or five books at a time. Like I I had stacks of books and I would literally read a few chapters in one, put it aside and read a few chapters in the other. And um and just, you know, I didn't really talk to the other kids. I didn't have any friends, you know, it just was an odd duck. And so that can be really difficult because for me, you know, it can be put aside as like that we don't respond to emotions the same way. Um, but I definitely feel them, right? Even if I don't express them the same way as everybody else, or if I don't, um, you know, have the same kind of reactions, um, you know, and, and being in a social group is really difficult for me because I always feel like, I feel like I need a script, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, when this happens, you need to do this. When you, 
And so being in any social situation, especially when you're growing up, can be super challenging because there was no script for me. Um, and where I was and when I was growing up, you know, there was no resources for me to understand what was going on um, out in the middle of nowhere. And now, like, I kind of embrace it, right? Like, I'm like, I love who I am and I love you know, every part of me, even the weird parts that like, okay, I understand that I don't react the same way as everybody else, but I love it. But the thing is the animals didn't care. The animals didn't care that I was a little bit odd or that, you know, that I didn't react the same way as everybody else. Um, and I didn't need a script with them. I could just live in the moment and be what it was. So the animals, especially in high school, I mean, that was, that saved me, man. <laughs> I, I I definitely would not be here if it wasn't for me being able to go home and, um, you know, be with the horses. And I ended up doing the last couple of years at home um, because school just became so, so difficult for me. Um, it was just torture every single day. But and it wasn't the, the learning part like that. That's easy. Like, you know, that part was easy. But just being around the people. So when I got my first zebra, you know, it was definitely one of those things where, um, you know, it was very good for me at that time period to be able to take something that really only a few people in the world have ever done, right? And and in the like the zebra jumping that I did that was later, they're like nobody's ever done that, and they've still not done it. Like nobody does that. So that really helped me to kind of learned that I did have some benefit to the world, you know, that I did have something to give to the world that I didn't have to be judged by, you know. Really so, so beautiful though. I mean, like it hits my heart and high school, like you say, is hard for everybody, mm -hmm. but for you to have the opportunity for your parents to put your, your mom to put you around animals and give you that option to really express a gift, right? Because you're only weird by other people's definition, right. right? And that's one beautiful thing about animals. They don't, like you said, they don't care. Mm -hmm. You're They're only responding to your response. And like you said, your predictability, your trustworthiness, your, your um, ability to provide a pecking order, so to speak, or where you are and they know where you stand and you know where they stand. Right. And, um, for people, I, I just love this piece because animals have a therapeutic, you know, aspect in so many ways. But um, what would you say for, I mean, whether people are quote titled on the spectrum or not, I have family members, I have good friends. It's, it's something I actually love because I feel very close to people who have worldly challenges, but are really exceptionally gifted in many ways and animals have allowed them to develop yes. a gift. And so what would you say to people who have kids or who are young or maybe who are older who still haven't found their groove or their gift? How could they connect with animals to help? Because animals can provide this connection that that lets you share that gift in a way that's not weird, you know, which is yeah. a, a worldly human thing, right? Because the rest of the species on the planet don't think it's weird. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, I think animals kind of like it. But, um, you know, being around them, it can teach so much that I, I think I think things are a little bit different now than they were probably 20 years ago. But um I think society tries to shape the odd kids to be normal, right? There's always this push to try them, to shape them the way that they, the society wants them to go. And, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that where I am right now that I'm okay with it, you know, and I've totally embraced my weirdness and I love it. And, you know, if growing up means that I have to wear shoes and not play with bugs, then, you know, maybe I don't want to do it. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I think, I think people can hide so many wonderful things about those kids um, that allowing them to grow naturally and to embrace what is unique about them and to find those those odd characteristics can, that can be so helpful in life. And animals, you know, um, I feel like there's there's a lot of kids, especially the kids on the spectrum that are you know, may have difficulty controlling emotions or knowing how to express emotions. 
animals are so accepting of it. And if you're, you're directing, you know, if it's temper or and things like that, where um, I never had a problem with, with the temper because I would close down and just not talk for days. So, you know, that was, that was mine. Um, and the animals didn't care if I didn't say anything for a week. You know, if I, if I didn't say one word for a week, they were perfectly okay with that. Um, and they help us to regulate how we feel and accept how we feel um, because they're just, they're just okay with it. They're not trying to get us to change. You know, never once did I have a horse that says, Hey, you need to talk about this. <laughs> you know, they don't say that. They're like, you don't want to talk. That's good. We don't have to talk. <laughs> I just Sammy, love that. Sammy Joe, you, you, this is astounding for me because I call Sammy Joe out of the clear blue and to get her to be on this show. And I got this vibrant, outgoing person on the phone that was engaging. And I, in fact, I, I communicated with Robin. I said, we're going to have so much fun with this lady and their, her crazy life with all her critters. So, I mean... <laughs> I I absolutely hold you in a very special place because of the example that you're setting and just because heck I I you were just a great personality with outgoing with animals and stuff so <laughs> it only you know, lasts for a little while I mean well I got you on a good day so <laughs> tell me uh, tell me about working with camels Oh, I love camels. Like you see every one of these animals know, you know, right? I love zebras. I you, love put a, you put a centipede on the screen and I'm like, oh look, it's so cute. <laughs> but um I I haven't had camels now for um a few years. Um, but I worked with a lot of camels, did a lot of training. We did um actually up um around Yellowstone every summer we would go um take the camels up and do tours up around Yellowstone and um you know, we had at one time we had uh, 10 camels and this was me and, and a really good friend of mine. Um, and I just, there's something about camels, you know, they've been domesticated for so long and there's so much to them. Um, they can be incredibly dangerous and they can be really, really difficult. Um, and, you know, when they say, you know, where can you stand around a horse that's safe? You know, you have the safe zones that you stand around a horse. There's no such thing around a camel. They can reach you. If you're within 15 feet of a camel, they can get you. So, you know, there's so much when an animal is that powerful and that capable of injuring you, but yet they can be so gentle and so um, affectionate, you know, that's, there's really so much to them. And um, I have really enjoyed them. And, and, there's quite a camel community in the U.S. And for anybody, if you have camels, join that camel community, the camel ears. Let me tell you, that is the most supportive group of people for camel resources. But well, tell, share with us. You, you, I read something. Uh, I think it was on your the the one secret to working with a camel. Uh, I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> well, it, it, it was getting them not to be frightened of people and, and crowds or something like that. Oh, you know, that's that is kind of whenever you're taking any animal into public, um, you know, that's that is difficult to for any animal to get them to not be afraid of the weird things that people do, because I think I'm weird, but I think everybody else is weird because they do unpredictable things. <laughs> <laughs> that me and the animals don't don't care for but uh, we do a lot of work um, we did a lot of work with the camels on just associating them with lots of different situations and seeing how many weird things that we could do around them that they could be okay with that's fascinating and you like to ride dressage correct I do yeah yeah this is my um I see see my office here this is I try to contain my office here all of my craziness this is all my dressage stuff <laughs> that's great and in among this menagerie you've got a couple of dressage ponies i do i have uh i have four horses uh, my main dressage horse he's 13 and uh, most of this ridiculousness in this room is him um he's he's won most of this he's just an amazing horse and been a very very big journey and he's he's been so good for me because he's a very emotional horse right and so um for me to be working with a horse who is so emotional about things where i'd just be like just 
do it already. And he's like, but mom, I have feelings. <laughs> so, <laughs> so being able through the years to allow him to have his big feelings and to be okay with it. Like that's, that's been quite a journey because I've never quite had one that had quite so many big feelings as he does. Um, and then I've got two youngsters, um, a yearling and a two-year-old um, that are up and coming. So well, Robin would volunteer to come down and break those horses for you. <laughs> oh, in fact, I have two two-year-olds I want to send to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> My one yearling is 16-3 already. He's, no way. He's a giant. What I don't know kind? what I'm going to do. Huh? What kind is it? He's a Hanoverian. Oh my gosh. That's I bought cute. him when I, I bought him because I trained um, his mother and two of his siblings and his uncle. And I, I just loved that family line. And so I told the breeder, I want her next baby. Um, and they said, well, do you, she's, she's already pregnant. You know, we're going in for a heartbeat check. Um, do you, do you want to know who the daddy is? I'm like, I don't care. Like I, I want it because of the mayor. And so as soon as the heartbeat was confirmed, I bought him. And so didn't realize that he was going to be so big <laughs> like this. That is huge. <laughs> he's a giant. So yeah, he's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so yeah. Sam, Sammy Joe, you also train dogs. Yes. Uh, and, and I want to share with people that, you know, you've kind of heard how gifted Sammy Joe is. Um, and that applies to all four-legged critters. Um and there is, she's developed a way that you can work remotely with Sammy Joe. Would you share a little bit about, about that opportunity? Yeah, I've, um, I've recently started a Patreon um, where I'm going to be working on some online training um, so that, you know, it's, it's going to be little videos and little just tidbits on how to help with, um, with dog training. You know, there's only so many dogs that I can train here. And of course people have to be here for me to train their dogs, but, um, through Patreon, I want to do some, um, like online video conferencing where I can connect with people, um, in different parts of the country, um, and help with dog training issues. And, um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, well, that's cool. And where, where can people, how do people get involved or how do people, if they've got a dog and want to start the process? Um, so the, the Patreon, you go to the Patreon page. Um, and of course I, I don't have it pulled up at the moment, but, um, Sammy Joe Stoller, um, and it's $5 a month, um, for training tips and, uh, you know, it's, it's still, I'm still getting it going and figuring out how the process works on it, but I've got all kinds of big ideas that I'm trying to get out there on on continuation of it but yeah on patreon sammy joe stoller s-t-o-h-l-e-r and we can include you can send us links we can include okay. the official links in the show notes um both for the patreon and also for just how do people find you like if people are really curious about where you're going to be next with a zebra on set or with something you know or what you're up to do you share a lot of that um where would people find you uh, my Facebook page, I, I'm kind of insane with it because I post several times a day usually. Um, and then I go into quiet mode and I won't post for a few days because that's the way my world works. But it's mostly, it's pretty much all like flowers and bugs and pretty rocks. Um, so it's, uh, that's Sammy Joe Stoller um, on Facebook. And um, it's always entertaining and family friendly. And <laughs> Well, most of the time it's family friendly. <laughs> most of the time. No, I keep it, I keep it really good. So it's, it's very positive. I try to keep everything positive stuff and, and, you know, mostly animals and bugs, you know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> things that I love I, in my world. Okay. And we do have to, we could, I, we literally Robin could talk like this all day long. Oh, absolutely. I but, have so but, many things rolling in my brain. I'm like, Oh, what about yeah, that? Like, yeah, we're just we going to have to have you back on the would show. You, would you come back on the show sometime? Absolutely. Okay. So, but just as a rundown, tell us how many critters are on your place. Just uh, um, like at the four moment, dogs like, and this is about the least that um, I've had in my life because you know, the problem is that um, when you, I'm not going to say how old I am, but when you hit like this age, all of the animals. <laughs> I guarantee you this they're younger than both of us. I know, but so there's this thing like, you know, when you, when you leave home and you get independent and then you get all of these, these animals, like, you know, in your twenties or whatever. And um, so you get your horses and your dogs. 
The problem is when you get them all kind of at the same time, they all kind of start going at the same time. So um, I've lost several of my horses over the last couple of years. And it's just, it's been hard. Like my, my old man was 27 years old. They lost him just a couple months ago. Um, and, you know, he was still geared up to live another four or five. I don't know. But um, he was, it was very sudden, but, you know, I lost several of them. So now like I'm down to four horses and it's just not very many. <laughs> so, you know, I'm, in my world, like, you know, I'm used to having like 10 to 15. And so now I'm like, okay, I'm down to my four. And then I've got two zebra hybrids, a zebra donkey cross and a zebra horse cross. Um, and the Zorse is 27 also, and the Zonkey is 18. So they're both kind of getting up there, um, especially the Zorse. I'm in the water buffalo and, um, you know, I've got a koi pond with a bunch of koi and uh, I don't know, three, maybe four cats, depending on if the stray stays around. Boy, dinner time must be chaos at your right? place. <laughs> well, and if I'm boarding dogs, so I, I board and train dogs also. So they all stay here at my house. And so on average, you know, I'll have like a, a 10 dogs staying here that are other people's dogs. I have one um, he's laying on the floor behind me. Um, but Christmas is going to be nuts because I'm going to have like 28 dogs here. Wow. <laughs> so, oh. so I'm pretty much not going to sleep for like five days. And, um, you know, cause it's, it's just going to be taking care of dogs nonstop. And I'm going to be a zombie by, you know, a few days after Christmas. So. <laughs> That's great. Well, uh, Elisa Farmer, who is the president of our main sponsor has been watching this and they want to send you a little gift gift basket of their products which is joint supplements oh. for horses uh and for dogs too so we'll uh we'll get your address here in a minute and they're gonna send you some stuff that robin can attest to her her horse lived three extra years or four what robin tell me yeah it's really incredible um we found out about the product for the first horse we used it on was like you're saying one of those older horses that you've had forever that's really special like the best one you've ever had and um he got a lot of tick related stuff that is horrible and anyway he was to the point where we were having that conversation of i don't know how much longer we can watch him suffer like this and it the summit it's injectable for horses um soon to be an oral option but uh, is injectable and it gave him an extra three years. So wow. um, pretty amazing. You're going to get a gift basket. All yeah. Right. We love having them as a sponsor because it's people we talk to have animals and it's, right. you know. Well, and I said, Wilson, Wilson's 16, you know, cattle, like everybody always asks me, well, what's the lifespan? And I say, we don't talk about that. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, he's, we talked. He's a very young 16, though. Right. Shosh Shoshana was another guest here on the show, and she has a water buffalo. She's in Texas, too. And she happened to be driving by and had room in the trailer. And now she's got another <laughs> water buffalo. So keep a little room in your trailer while you're driving around. Exactly. You have Sammy, to fill it. That, Sammy Joe, it's been wonderful. We're going to hold you to your promise to come back and be with us. <laughs> All right a special person and it, you're just our kind of our kind of person robin do you have anything to add man we could talk all day sammy joe it's been a pleasure and you have just such a beautiful story and you're such a beautiful person thank you so much and we will visit again and we'll share all the links if you guys are watching or listening on youtube or spotify and you want to get in touch with sammy joe if you live in texas and you have a dog personally you want to train but check out her training program online. Um, what an amazing way to access such a gift. So thank you, Sammy Joe, again, Steve, always a pleasure. Thank you. And thanks, Sammy Joe. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us for another episode of A View from the Summit. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us for A View from the Summit. This program is made possible by Summit Animal Health. Check them out online at summitanimals.com. Thanks for joining us again, and we'll see you next week for another View from the Summit.